All right, now that we've looked at the basics of a pixel, let's sort of talk about color and what color looks like inside of Photoshop and a few of the basics of color modes. Now, here in this photograph, again, I've got many different colors and shades and varying intensities of the hues. Now, in a typical Photoshop document, we're working in a digital device, so Photoshop obviously runs on a computer, so we're typically working in a three-channel RGB document. Um, now, depending if you're going to be outputting for print um, or other devices, you can switch the color mode, but most of the time, most people work with uh, RGB or, or CMYK if you're going to output for print. Now, in this document right here, I just want to switch over to the channels right here, and you can see that my top channel in Photoshop says RGB. This is the composite. If I switch to the red, I'm seeing all of the color information that belongs to the color red. If I switch to green, I'm seeing all of the color information that belongs to green. If I switch to blue, I'm seeing all of the blue. Now, when I combine all three of those together, I get the color composite. Now, by default, Photoshop shows these channels over here in grayscale. You can, you can obviously see those are each grayscale. But if you want, you can go up to your preferences and head down here and come up into the general here. And uh, we can switch that to what we want. So if we click on the interface tab right here, there's this little checkbox that says show channels in color. And once I did that, you'll you right away you can see over there. Now when I click on each individual channel, it actually shows it in its particular color, which may be a little easier to, to distinguish and see what's going on there. Okay, so we know that pixels are made up of red, green, and blue. We looked at that earlier when we saw our pixel document here. And each individual pixel in this image is uh, a single hue. So if I zoom in here, and let's just pick one color at random here. So I'm going to get my color pickler from Photoshop, my eyedropper tool. That's I on the keyboard, the shortcut key there. And I'm just going to come over here and select one of these. So now when I click and select, it's going to sample that color. And I have my sample size set to point sample. If I set it to 3 by 3 average, it's going to sample essentially 3 pixels all the way around there and average them out, which I definitely don't want in this instance. I want the exact pixel I'm clicking. So I'll come over here and sample that color. So Photoshop just set that color now to my foreground color. It's also up here in my color panel. But I'm going to open up the, uh, double click the foreground color to show you the exact um, color of the pixel I just selected. So you can see I've definitely got that green I selected. And I've got all these different values down here. And this is what we're going to spend a couple of minutes here talking about. Now the default, or I guess the first one in this list, is what was known as HSB. That's hue, saturation, and brightness. The second one here is RGB. That's just red, green, and blue. The third one here is a lab. This is your luminance and your A and B colors. Um, this one's a bit more technical, but it was created to sort of replicate how vision is interpreted by humans. And then last we have CMYK, which is your cyan, magenta, yellow, and K for black. So we're gonna start off here in the top left. So this color that I've selected here is hue 91 degrees. So you think, well, what does that mean? Well, this is actually the physical degree on a color wheel. We'll look at that in a second. The S for the saturation, this is how saturated the color is. And then B, how bright the color is. Okay, down here, red, green, and blue is pretty self-explanatory. In the next video, we're gonna look at exactly how we come up with these numbers, 137 and 67 and three and what those mean. But that's just how much red, how much green, and how much blue are mixed together. So you can see, because I'm working with the green, there's a lot of red and a lot, a lot of green, and really no blue. And then your lab, this one we're going to skip over, um, but that's your, your lab values there. This is actually a coordinate system that, that's done with lab. And then CMYK is the percent or the amount of those pigments, if you will, the ink. So 77% cyan, 24% magenta, 100% yellow, 9% black is going to give you that color of green. So there's a lot of different ways to represent the exact same color. And the one we actually skipped over here, this last one, when you ever see this little pound sign followed by a, a color, that's a hexadecimal color. And we'll look at how these are calculated as well in a future video. So let's go ahead and take a look at a color wheel. I'm going to cancel out of here. 
And I'm going to hide this image that I've selected here. And I'm going to turn on a typical color wheel. I'm way zoomed in here. So I'm going to zoom back out, back to 100%. Command 1 on the keyboard. So this color wheel right here is an RGB color wheel. In other words, our three primary colors are the same primary colors that make up the monitor pixels, red, green, and blue. So here's my red, here's my green, and here's my blue. So you can sort of see this triad. And by mixing these three colors in specific ways, I can come up with any one of 16.7 million colors. Now this color wheel has these, it's sort of split, so there's not, obviously there's not 16.7 million here, um, but in a typical color wheel there would be. Now in a RGB world, so red, green, and blue, it's known as an additive color space. And what that means is basically, how do I make the color white? Well, in an additive world, you shine all of the red, all of the green, and all of the blue together at once, 100% of all of them, and you'll come up with white. Now, in a subtractive color world, you have to think, well, how do I come up with white if I'm going to print? And it's called subtractive because basically you subtract all of the pigment to get white. In other words, you start with a white piece of paper and you print on the white piece of paper. And if you want white, you don't print any ink. So it's a subtractive color space, whereas as RGB is an additive color space. We have to add all those pigments together to get white. So um, let's go ahead and turn off this color wheel. And I'm going to turn on a representation of the additive RGB color space. So we have red, green, and blue. Right here in the middle is where all three colors overlap. And you can see that that makes white. Where red and blue overlap, that makes your magenta. Where your green and blue, that gets you your cyan. Blue and green gets you your yellow. And you'll notice that these three colors are the three primary colors of the CMYK color space. And that's because CMYK color space is the exact opposite or the inverse of the RGB color space. So if I take this uh, image here and I literally invert it, so I'm going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to go to my image. So it's under uh, our adjustments invert right here. So I'm going to select this command and watch what happens to these colors. So when I select invert, I essentially now I'm looking at the CMYK color space where I have my cyan, my magenta, and my yellow. And where all three of those overlap, I have black instead of white. And where the two colors each individually overlap, I'm back down to my red, my green, and my blue. So I'm going to hit Command-I again to make that inverse. So these two color spaces are inverse of one another, whether you're printing or whether you're viewing your device on screen. All right. Now our last slide here we're going to look at in this video is the HS. Um, B or HSV in this case color mode and that one in Photoshop is right here so we looked at the RGB that's the color wheel we looked at the cyan magenta yellow and black representation here and now we're gonna look at HSB so hue um, is basically the color or the pigment that you're going to be using in your device so right now it's set to 91 degrees well what does that mean Let's go back and turn on our color wheel here. So if we are looking at this color wheel, we can assume right here at top, let's say this is zero degrees. So if I move 91 degrees, we think about a circular is 360 degrees all the way around. So if I move 91 degrees, it's basically going to be somewhere right over a right, kind of at a right angle. That is the hue that we're gonna be looking at for the, the H in the HSB. All right, next we have our S value. And that refers to our saturation. So all the way desaturated is basically we've added gray or we've taken away all the color. And the more saturated you go outward in this model, the more pure the color becomes. And then our V is sort of like the value. In here it's called B, which is for brightness. Um, but I think it's a little bit easier to interpret as value. They're really the same thing. And as we increase up, the value or the brightness of that individual hue, sort of clarity maybe, um, increases as well. So it's just, it's the same thing as RGB. It's just a different way of thinking about the colors. Um, 
if I look at an RGB value, 67, 137.3, it's kind of hard to visualize or think about that color. But if you think about it in an HSB, it makes a little more sense. Oh, okay, hue 91 degrees. I can now associate that with a specific pigment. And I can say, oh yeah, it's, it's more or less saturated and it's more or less bright. So you can sort of visualize the color a little bit easier using these three numbers as opposed to these three numbers. But again, remember, they're the exact same thing. It's just a different way of showing um, that value.